Hello, hockey fans, and welcome to the very first episode of Griffin Pack Chat. My name is Jace Gabriel, and through this series, we'll get to know some of your Griffin ambassadors just a little bit better. Our first guest is former Kookaburra and former Perth Thunderstick, Trent Mitten. Welcome, Trent. Thanks, mate. Cheers for having me on. Yeah, great to have you with us. Uh, great to be our very first guest. So, so tell us about your hockey journey. So from you know from a junior up until you know your your time with Kookaburras. Yep. So I um, started playing hockey yeah down in Bunbury. Um, my dad was a good hockey player, and hockey sort of ran in my family a little bit. Um, hockey mum was actually a very good hockey player as well. Um, so I started playing down in Bunbury, then moved to Perth and started playing for Wesley South Perth um, and sort of made my way up through the ranks as, as everyone does. Got recognised quite early from a national point of view um, and was lucky enough to make my debut in 2010 um, in Malaysia. And through then I probably I'll be, I was a part of the national group for 12 years in total, um, which I'm really proud of and I reckon there was some, some big ups and downs during that. Um, I think the thing I struggled with most was consistency and really getting picked for consistent tournaments or back-to-back -to -back tournaments a little bit due to me, definitely. Um, but I think also one of the things about playing for the best team in the world, it's bloody hard to make the team sometimes. There was occasions when I was playing some of the best hockey in my life, but bad luck at Jake Wetton's to go your spot or Matt Goads or Jamie Dwyer or Glenn Turner or Kieran Gathers. So hockey is actually quite hard to, <laughs> to get in that team, which I which Fantastic. I found out the hard way. Um, so again, like I was really proud of the time I spent in in, in the group, which um, finished with the um, Tokyo Olympics in 2021, um, and then hung up the boots after that. And then uh, from there, I guess um, I had a contract in Amsterdam, um, playing over there. So for the last two two seasons, I've played um, over in Holland, and then as of November November. 2022, hung up the boots, I guess, officially from professional hockey. Yeah, fantastic. Um, look, it's a big journey and uh, you've obviously spoken about the ups and downs through that and we can, we can certainly understand uh, the competitive, competitiveness of, uh, of a Kookaburras team, which is uh, through that period, I think, won some, a couple of World Cups and, and obviously um, some Olympic medals in there as well. So you've spoke about traveling around the world um where around the world has hockey taken you yeah so lucky enough to go pretty much all over the place and i was very lucky to have hockey as my job for for over a decade so we got to go to europe every year and um spend a heap of time in india um i think the two ones that stand out for me i was able to play in the hockey india league so actually playing seasons over there and it was actually during a time when us as the Kookaburras were travelling to India a lot separately as well. So we were spending three months a year plus in India. It was like a second home for us. Um, and the other one that stands out is being able to play um, in Holland, in Amsterdam, which is arguably the best club comp in the world. All the best players around the world can play there um, and earn a bit of money and, and make a bit of a living as a professional hockey player. So that's the other one that stands out. Um, and probably just the one that has a little asterisk on it for me was a um, got to go to Hong Kong and do like an exhibitional hockey um hockey fives format and um more not because of the level of hockey that was played just because of the five days we got to spend in in hong kong and the and the good times i had with with a jacob wetton or and, and those sort of guys fantastic fantastic now you spoke a couple of times about the the class in, in holland now it's it's quite different i suppose in australia um being probably a part-time hockey player full-time hockey in in holland what's that experience like yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, basically everyone from – we have some younger guys in it who were in our groups, 20-year-olds, 18-year-olds, up until the most experienced guys, um, yeah, 32, 35-year-olds. Um, everyone's earning a wage. Um, it changes the level, obviously, if you're playing international or maybe um, junior internationals or you're just a, your, your club player. Um, but a lot's, a lot's expected of you as well, so we're doing – four or five sessions a week, game on a weekend, video meetings, uh, recovery, gym, et cetera. So you, it's very, very close to the national program here in, here in Perth, which all the boys do. Um, so for a club format, it's just unbelievable. And the resourcing and the funding and the, there's a team trip every year. A few years ago, they got to go to New York on a team trip, like which is fantastic. like in speaking about hockey, that's just unheard of. Um, so it's a pretty amazing experience and pretty cool, cool thing to be a part of. Oh, fantastic. Where would your favourite place uh be to play in the world yeah i'd say 
because it's a recent experience, I'd say playing in Holland was definitely a highlight of, of my hockey life. And I think um, because we did quite well and we made the finals, so we got to play in the finals of the Hof class and the finals games are unbelievable. It's just a different atmosphere. It seems like everyone turns out um, to support their teams. We actually had a, a crosstown rivalry. So we played, we're Amsterdam Hockey Club. We got to play Pinnake. Um, and at their home ground, it was just the most hostile environment I've ever been a part of, getting sworn out from the side. And there was flares going off mid-game. Wow. Um, there's some footage online, but it is unbelievable and, like, something I'll always remember. We, we, we then expand, yeah, like you said, to the crowd. Um, you've experienced the crowd in in, in Amsterdam and in, in, in Pinake in, in the class sort of final series. Um, what about, you know, India, um, maybe Germany, places like that, what, what, how does the crowd sort of vary? Yeah, it's really interesting. The, the crowds in India, obviously, everyone speaks about them. They are unbelievable. Like, we, during the Hockey India League, I was playing for a rural team um, called Branchy, and our stadium, I think, seated, let's say, 2,000. But there was easily five or 7,000 people in there. And it's exactly like you, you can picture people sitting on rooftops and hanging off light, pole, light, light poles just to get a glimpse of our game. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that, that was unbelievable. And we had... Some, like some kit after the games that our manager would give us. We could just like throw it into the crowd and it was trying to catch and stuff. And again, it's just stuff that as hockey players, we're so used to playing in front of smaller crowds or just your real passionate supporters. And to go internationally and get such good support was pretty amazing. I guess we go to the opposite end of the spectrum now at, at Tokyo. Um, Protocol is obviously not having spectators. How was that experience? Yeah, it was pretty unique. My career shaped up in that I missed selection 2012 and 2016. So to make the Olympics in 2020, 2021, um, I was really looking forward to it being the, the full Olympic experience. So to have it dialed back as such was a little bit disappointing, and but work with what you got. So we, we had to shape up and, and perform. Um, just weird things that I think when we look back on is going to be really, really strange. Like we're in the dining hall, we ate in like Perspex plastic separating us. and had to wear plastic gloves and obviously masks everywhere. Team Australia had rules separate to, I guess, like um, the normal Olympic Olympic organisation. So Team Australia didn't want you liaising or talking with any other countries because you don't know what their protocols were, were. And then even further than that, like us as a Kookaburras team had our own protocols. Like really, we, they didn't want us liaising with any other athletes because if we can keep our bubble as tight as possible, we're at least chance of of getting sick and, and then being able to play. Yeah, um, of course. So, again, unique experience. I think when I look back on it in five years, thinking, like, well, what were we doing? Yeah, 100%. Uh, let's, let's go back to 2016 and 2012, obviously, missing selection. Um, how, do you, how do you, as an athlete, deal with those sort of knockbacks uh, to be able to just keep pushing yourself to keep going and going and going? Yeah, I'd say one of the things I'm most proud of is my resilience through my career. Um, and again, some of my non-selections were due were due to my performance or form or whatever it might be, um, and some were due to, as I said, the team just being too strong or my makeup, my my position in the team, like um, just didn't fit with somebody else, or it, it comes a little bit down to that. Um, but as I said, at the end of the day, the coach have to make a decision, and you can't. It's not a personal decision; it's for the best interest of the team, and I think that's something I'm really proud of in that being able to step away and put yourself outside of it a little bit um, and realise that you are part of a team and the reason why our Cook Growers team was successful for so long is because everyone was selfless. Um, and if the team's succeeding, then you're succeeding. Of course, of course. Speaking of the Cookaburras, mm -hmm. uh, how have you seen them perform uh, since you obviously have uh, left mm -hmm. the, the environment um, up until this recent World Cup in, in 2023? Yeah, it was really interesting. I watched the games closely. Um, I think I've been out of the program now 18 months, whatever, that I can be a spectator and I quite enjoyed watching for the first little period, whether at Com Games or whatever. It was weird watching. Like I felt like I like was still playing. Strange experience. But I felt like I could really step out and watch World Cup, which was cool. Um, how'd they go? Yeah, they struggled a little bit. Um, and I have, spo I have spoken to a few guys since the World Cup, some guys I'm closest with and from the outside, it just looked like a few teams maybe figured them out a little bit, figured out some of their key players. Um, I speak about like the Argentina game, 3-3 three, three, maybe in the end we got lucky, Lake hit a goal late. But, for instance, they sat really, really low. 
and yes, defensive, boring, whatever. But that completely took Tom Cray, Jake Wetton, Flynn Ogley, took them out of the game completely, took out our aerials to the pockets, um, and it forced other guys to make a play and do the work. And I reckon teams later on in the tournament learned from that and implemented similar things, and we just really couldn't break down defences. Um, yeah, so interesting. It'll be really interesting to see how the team responds and sort of what direction they go in now. Yeah, fantastic. Let's uh, speak. Well, what's next for you? Mm-hmm. Well, what, what's on the horizon hockey-wise? Obviously, have a beautiful wife and daughter. Well, what's on the horizon uh, coming up, I guess, for you? Yeah, good question. So I recently got a job at the WA Institute of Sport. Um, so I'm in the project management team, which is which is really cool. So we're looking after projects. Basically, it will help drive athlete performance for the next 10 years. So we have a strategic plan up until the Brisbane Olympics in 2032 whether it be equipment or maybe athlete wellbeing or nutrition or whatever it is. Um, outside of my professional role there, so I've taken on a coaching role with Wesley South Perth Hockey Club, first time being a head coach, so no doubt it can be a pretty interesting experience, a learning experience for me. Um, but, yeah, on outside of those things, just spending some time with the family. Um, we've been on the road or travelling for the last couple of years around Europe and Amsterdam and, and Holland, so looking forward to just setting some roots here in Perth. Thanks for giving us a really good in-depth look at your career. Uh, highlights, lowlights, it's always fascinating to know, you know what really drives uh, drives a hockey player. Who is your favourite hockey player? All-time, current, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'm going to go a little bit controversial and not say an Australian. Like, I've been very lucky. I've been played with Mark Knowles and Jamie Dwight, these legends of the game. The one I look most fondly on is is uh, Ashley Jackson. We got to play together in Hockey Indy League for a few seasons. Just unbelievable some of the things that he was able to do on the hockey field and I was just watching and managed to be lucky enough he was passing the ball to me and looked like I was doing good things as well, but Ashley Jackson for sure. Oh, fantastic. And last question for those Griffin lovers out there, why do you love Griffin? <laughs> I think it's just the history behind it for me. Like my dad used Griffin during his international career, and I've used Griffin my whole life. Um, I think the history in our family, but also the history of, of the brand itself, I mean, you always see the top players at the major events, World Cups, Olympic Games, and Com Games. There's always Griffin representation there. Um, yeah, I think that's the thing I love the most about the brand. Fantastic. Uh, for those watching who don't know, Tre- uh, Trent's dad, Grant, played for Australia, and your granddad as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Three t- three generational athlete, which is very rare these days. Look, thank you, Trent, for joining us. Really enjoyed the chat. Um, thank you all for, for watching. If you'd like to know more uh, about Trent, follow him on his socials. We'll uh, have those links for you. But uh, if you want the latest gear, check out griffinhockey.com.au or follow us on the socials. Until next time, thank you very much. See you guys.